It is 2 p.m. Central Standard Time that uh, you'll have to figure out what time zone you're in to find out what time it is there because my brain doesn't work like that uh, with doing math on the fly. Um, so I am super excited to be talking with Wayne Herring today. We met several years back in a mastermind group that was run by the one and only Big A, Mr. Aaron Walker. And uh, I've known Wayne for quite a while now and I uh, really appreciate what he does. And so we're getting ready to start here. So we'll be back in about oh, 38 seconds. <laughs> Welcome to Live with Bottleneck. My name is Jamie J, and uh, I'm the CEO and founder of Bottleneck Virtual Assistance. But that's not why we're here today. We are here today to talk to a good friend of mine. His name is Wayne Herring. And uh, quickly, before I introduce you, I, I want to let you know, if you can see right up above here, it says, stop the bottleneck in your business. And I put that there for a very specific reason. The reason I put that there was because Every single person that I bring on live with Bottleneck, this live stream that's going to Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, uh, Periscope, and Twitter is because they have some way to help you stop the bottleneck in your business. And I think it's really important that you understand the preface to this um, show, this live stream, because my ultimate... I think we're back. Are we back? You're back. You're we're here. back. Yeah, I got scared. <laughs> <laughs> we're here. We are here. We had a quick glitch. I've never seen that happen before. So hoorah. That's a part of doing live. I'm not sure exactly where you left, but uh, the reason why we have people on the live stream is because they're able to help stop the bottleneck in your business. And they're all experts in their field. And Wayne Herring is no different. So let me first start off by introducing uh, Wayne Herring to you. He's the owner of Business Builder Camp. Um, and we're going to be talking about curtains and mentors. Yeah, what does that mean? Let me tell you a little bit more about Wayne and why I believe he is an expert in the industry. He's the founder of Business Builder Camp. Wayne has helped men across the country grow their businesses into successful and thriving enterprises. However, there's so much more to his story than simply founder. Wayne has worked as a specialty drilling, blasting, and rock fall contractor and as an organic farmer. And he has grown the sales force and increased the revenue of a company his father started. He has run ultra marathons, gone on epic road trips, and is the 1997 Montana State Arm Wrestling Championship. That's amazing. Uh, Wayne is a father and recovered alcoholic. He loves to hunt and raise cows and pigs on his family farm, but he also enjoys yoga and meditation. Some have described Wayne as a renaissance man, but he thinks that is a strange term for the son of a coal miner. Having grown a business and coached other business owners, Wayne understands we have all have times in our lives where we're blocked. He founded Business Builders Camp to help men overcome those obstacles in building and growing their business. I love this. Wayne pushes the members of his camp to see new possibilities, discover new tools, and see the gifts they didn't know they had. Additionally, Wayne is passionate about gathering his camp together so they can learn from and push each other. Uh, so without any further ado, um, please allow me to introduce you to the one and only Wayne Herring. How are you, sir? Hey, Jamie. I'm doing great. Really good <laughs> to be with you and, and all your people. Yeah, this is fantastic. I love the fact when you go live, it's just live. It's out there for everything. So no matter what happens, it's going to be seen by everybody. <laughs> yeah, it kind of, maybe it kind of takes a little bit of pressure off in some ways. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, I do 
<coughs> quickly before you introduce yourself, if throughout this conversation for the next uh, 23, 30 minutes, somewhere around in there, if you have any questions for Wayne, please ask away. Uh, whether on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, Periscope, wherever you're calling from or are sitting at the moment across this wonderful world of ours, please ask away and I'll make sure uh, to get that up there. If for some reason you're seeing this in the replay, by all means, um, and there's Brian Seam. He said, good guys here. <laughs> hey, Brian. If for some reason you're you're seeing this on the replay and you would still like to have a question, ask in the comments section and I will make sure to forward that on to Wayne so that you can get your questions answered properly. And uh, um, while I'm doing this, uh, I'm, Wayne, if you could tell us a little bit about, more about who you are and what you do for those of us that, uh, for the listeners or watchers, viewers, I guess, that may not know who you are, maybe you could tell them a little bit more about you. Sure. Well... I, I noticed as you read through the intro, it's pretty long there. So sorry if we gave you more than uh, it was kind of a mouthful to read. Um, yeah, so I'm Wayne Herring, and I'm in central Pennsylvania. So it's 3 o'clock here, uh, East Coast time. And I'm a coach to business owners. So uh, in addition to things that have happened in the past, present day, what I get to do is work with a bunch of really great folks that – have had an idea in their head and they're making that idea become reality. And I get to help them tell their story. I get to um, help them see themselves sometimes in ways that, that they didn't see themselves that way. I love to see the power in people and help bring that out. So I do a bunch of coaching. You know, we, I was doing a lot of coaching live here on the farm in Pennsylvania. Uh, of course, some things currently with, uh, coronavirus and things has a lot of the live events um, kind of closed down. So we're still doing that work online. And as you said, Business Builder Camp is an extension of my coaching practice for business owners. And uh, I met you in a mastermind group. I met you with a bunch of other guys gathered by Aaron Walker. And I knew that someday as my individual coaching practice grew that I wanted to bring people together. I wanted to, ex I wanted them to experience and, and, you know, benefit from connection and ideas uh, and, and the push that comes from being in a group of, of people that inspire you. So that's where business builder camp and um, masterminds and, and the group work I'm doing now come from. So. I love it. Um, the power of getting, getting groups together, masterminding, thinking about that with and, and, and having accountability, all of that stuff is so good. One of the biggest things I, I got from being a part of a group like this is that while our, our, our staff, our, our company, uh, the staff members, we service members, it's a big family for us. We really are like a big family. We really are. And I, I don't say that like woo woo or anything. We really are. We really care about one another. And there's, yeah. there's a big culture there, a positive culture. However, there comes along certain times where, you know, as a business leader, I don't have all the answers. I don't really know sometimes, Hey, should I turn right? Should I turn left? Should I zig? Should I zag? And having that, kind of extension or that group of people that I can go to that fully trust and I can rely on and, and be vulnerable to, to help through these trying times as a business leader is such a major, um, I guess, opportunity benefit. Um, yeah. That's something that a lot of people don't have. And I wish they did. Um, do you offer that kind of um, arena with, the the business camp that you do yeah so w we offer the arena of live events and we've even done so you see i'm in i'm actually in my dad's office which is uh funny when you're 44 years old and i'm trying to point and be in the right direction <laughs> there's a uh, antlers and a bear behind me um so so i love the I love outdoors. it <laughs> I, not, I love not the outdoors sure that this is a bear market though but i mean <laughs> That's bad, right? But, uh, but I like it. So, um, yeah. So anyway, I love the outdoors. We live on a farm. We live on 20 acres. And 
and and I love going to outdoor lodges and things. So one of the things we've done with Business Builder Camp is we've done things like uh, rented a house for a small group in Gettysburg and gone out in the battlefield. That's really powerful, by the way, to stand in a historical place where some epic stuff happened and people were kind of, you know, striving and laid all out in the line with a bunch of other business owners, I found that maybe I'm weird and like think too much, but I was like, man, this is really powerful standing at the top of little round top with, with my guys. And so we've done, done that. And then we've done a, a turkey hunting trip uh, at a lodge in New York state. And then we've done uh, several meetups at our farm in Pennsylvania where we've got cows and pigs and a view of the fields. So there's a live event component. And then of course, as you know, getting together with people on zoom, uh, has now become second nature, I think, to all of us. But uh, that's yeah. very, yeah, it's it's not quite as good as live. Let's face it, but it's it's really good. And I and I think we've all gotten better at it. And and actually, our ability to connect through that platform has gotten stronger. So we connect via Zoom too, Jamie. Yeah, that's really neat. I think it's good to have that kind of an opportunity if if you have ev never been involved in a mastermind or some kind of a business group where you can get on zoom or even go to certain locations i know it's even cha it's challenging during this time as the date of this recording we're experiencing covid right now and it's kind of iffy do we go out do we not do we wear a mask like what, what's going on so that right. could be a challenging environment but still to have that opportunity to where you can go with a group of men uh, that are like-minded, share similar belief systems that you can just help discover maybe friction points or challenges within your own organization, or be able to be there if, if it's something you've been there and done that, maybe offer some advice and help someone else out that that may need that, that, that hand holding or something like that. I think it's a really good um, opportunity for everybody that's leading an organization. Um, up here on the screen right now, uh, it says curtains and mentors. And I wonder if maybe you can elaborate on what you mean by curtains and mentors. Sure. So, so I knew, of course, that you you help people with bottlenecks. And as I thought about a topic to talk with you about today, what what came to mind is curtains. Like, and I mean, like big stage curtains, Jamie, or maybe curtains that you push and then peek around. And and curtains for me are a metaphor for something has happened in my life and mentors goes with it. And so, so the idea is that there's curtains in life that exist. There's, um, you know, sometimes we're on this side of the curtain and other people are on the other side. Doesn't necessarily mean they're ahead of us or they're better than us or any of those things. It just means they're over there and they know some things that we don't know, or they've experienced things that we aren't aware of. And if we can just find a mentor or a peer or somebody to help us, part the curtain or move the curtain to the side, you know, we look around and we're like, wow, oh, so that's how things happen on this side. I had no idea. And it's almost like instantly we're not stuck or, you know, like um, if I'm the bottleneck or there is a bottleneck, like pff, instantly there's relief on the system. And so that's what I mean by curtains. And there's, there's been various times in my life where in in my life, so not so business and in life where there's been a curtain like that. And sometimes I didn't even know there was a curtain or that it existed. And somebody uh, came next to me and was able to show me the other side. Sometimes I asked and looked around for somebody to open the curtain. And sometimes it, it happened, you know, it, serendipitously or a, a God moment or a universe, universal conscious moment or whatever. But that's what I mean by curtains. I think that's a that's a really good analogy. Um, I like that. You know, uh, what's happening behind the curtain? I mean, you could go off in so many different directions here. And one of the things I've seen is that I've talked to a, a lot of people uh, this year and, and that I looked up to um, that I believe are uber successful. And I strive to want to be kind of like them. I'm really happy with me, with my life and all of that. But if I'm not if I'm too comfortable, something's wrong with me. I I need to feel challenged. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about that? It, 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 do, do you feel like that same way? Or it, I mean, I, it's where do you draw the line be between I want to look up to somebody and try to get better versus hey, I'm happy with myself. 
Well, you you know, it's always easy to look at other people and say, well, you should be happy, Jamie. Um, you know, my wife and I, it's been a while, but there was one night where we, we had dinner together. Um, you guys had been doing hockey at the Hershey Arena, and it was a fun night. We were laughing, and there was um, uh, some other friends there. And and I know watching your business, like, yeah, you got a lot of great stuff going on. Um, sometimes it's harder to see that ourselves. Um, and I feel very similar to you. In fact, I was thinking this morning at the at the core of my coaching work and business builder camp, what's it all about anyway? And really, it's I want to help um, people to be happy and fulfilled. And sometimes it's it's not a matter of doing something else or accomplishing something else. Sometimes it's an inside job and it's it's being aware and being happy. But I also certainly want um, to help people feel like they're living into their potential. And I think the world needs your potential and the world needs you know, everybody's potential. So, so there, what I hear you saying, and I agree with is it, there's, there's kind of a fine line between I want to have gratitude and I want to, you know, wow, like I, I want to take a moment and appreciate being with my son a couple weeks ago and watching him make little rafts and put him in the Colorado, Colorado river. I want to be really present. And yet, and yet on the other hand, in life in general, I'm, I don't want to stop. I want to keep trying to improve myself. And certainly people that are listening to your live stream and connecting with you, that's why they're here is they, they want more, but I certainly hope that they can take a moment, maybe even right now and just, you know, be, be happy as well. Um, yeah, I love it. I love it. I think, I think big A is where I heard this first and uh, who knows, but he said, you know, uh, the, the ordinary to extraordinary, you know, your, what's ordinary to you could be extraordinary to so many other people. Yeah. And I learn so much. I'm always trying to learn. I, I absolutely thrive on education because the more I learn, the more I can share with others. And to me, that is extremely valuable. Um, I think it's really important to focus in a certain area or a certain niche, many people like to say it, and learn that business really well. But there's always going to be somebody that knows more about it. And so just be thankful for what we this is me thinking, right? Just yeah. I'm, I'm thankful for what I have. And I'm thankful that I have the desire to want to do better, um, to want to be different in more ways. And that that search, that journey is so fun for me. Yeah. Um, but it's it obvious. <laughs> I, I watched you. Yeah. But it couldn't be without groups, without other people without learning about that. And what a fascinating thing that I want to point out too is of these several people that I look up to, um, it's exciting to see that they're human beings. They're actually human. They're not Superman. They're not, you know, Wonder Woman. They're not, but but they're they're much like you and, and me in a way in that they've just defined what it, they understand what it is that they want to do. And they've continued to learn and they do it a little bit differently than most people. It's really not that difficult, but being able to learn from them and understand that they go through a lot of the same challenges that you and that you and I go through, but they've done a great job of overcoming the hurdles. Sure. And you, you have things, it's not a matter of comparison, right? You have things that you figured out. There's curtain curtains to use that analogy that that you've seen behind jamie such like with your uh, assistant business which i noticed on the thing it says distance assistance rather than virtual i like that <laughs> thank so, you so so there's things there's things that you figured out that you can offer to them too and yeah for sure they're human and i was reading uh in the book uh war of art this morning stephen pressfield is the author and i'm I, it's like my current kick right now is war of art and his book do the work and turning pro and in there, he was talking about how many times we try to behave as though we live in a hierarchy. I don't know if I can say this right, hierarchical or hierarchy, like in a hierarchy, right? Where I have to compare myself to people above or below all the time. And when in fact, he says, we can live in more of a, like a, a territorial model where my territory may be 
you know, we're talking about gathering men together to have these uh, camps and to do our, our mastermind work. And, and you're doing assistance and you're can, making these great connections from, from far away. And neither one of those is, is better. Like I'm painting on my own canvas and you're painting on your canvas and we can both learn from each other and we can both find curtains that I I've got ones that I know about that you don't. Right. And uh, exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. No, I, I love it. I think it's, I think it's fantastic. Um, It's, it's really neat because when you, you, there's also a vulnerability factor that comes into this. I mean, like I said, there's so many different directions we can go off of this analogy, but, but there really is. Like, yeah. and, and if you think about it on the flip side and you're going through the curtains to present or something, so to speak, right? You're on a stage, there's curtains drawn, you maybe yeah. peek through there. You're a little nervous. You don't know whether or not what you're going to say is going to resonate. If it's, if you're going to get laughed at, if people are going to sure. think you're crazy, but you can also pull those curtains open or just, and just take a, huge, monstrous, motivated, confident step forward and just unleash the wisdom and share with it what you will. I think that does two things. Number one, it gets you through the front door. That's the hardest part, just stepping out and having the courage to do so. But the second thing is in delivering that communication, that information, um, I think you're going to fi find that It'll be a certain, because you definitely have to take a position, but you're going to find that this is going to resonate with a certain type of person, mm -hmm. a certain a certain group of people. And that's where you're going to be able to define or, or understand, okay, this is my message and this is who my message is intended for. And it's going to verify whether or not what you're saying is, is, is worthy. Sure. Sure. Yeah, and, and maybe sometimes you need somebody to kick you through the curtain too, right? Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> and, that, and that's what Wayne's for. <laughs> I like I like kicking people through the curtain. I, or gen gentle, gentle, come on like this. It's like this. Yeah. It's like this. <laughs> well, it could be if I if I can go. I have a, a quick story. It's really quick, but. When I was in the in the military, my MOS was 11 Charlie. That's with the mortars. But I was in the 82nd Airborne. So we had to jump out of, people say, perfectly good airplanes. I don't right. know how perfect they were. C-130s were. They were pretty rough. So anyways, we you go on and you load by four chocks. And chocks are lines. And you have outboard and inboard chocks. But there's four of them. And so I was walking on. I'll never forget this. 127. That was my roster number in jump school and in basic training. So one, two, seven, get to the outside, you know, get in. You know, and I'm like, thank the Lord. I'm the last one. Oh, thank you. You know, I was, I was freaking out. This is my first jump ever. I see. Yeah. So I move over and going on and we load up and it didn't occur to me until the plane was taking off that I was in the number one position because I was the last person on. Uh, you thought, yeah. Uh -huh. So I started freaking out. We go through all the setups, the stand-ups, the hookups, and it, they go all the way down. Okay, okay. And they sound up and it gets to me, and I'm supposed to take one giant step forward, my hand turned at a 45-degree angle, and go to the jump master. And I'm supposed to yell out the top of my lungs, all okay, jump master. And that means we got we're we're good, we're ready. And what I that's when I thought I said what came out of my mouth was <laughs> and I hear this. What did you say, you? <laughs> he says, you better sound off you. And then I remember he finally got me. I, I finally made it. He put me on this little green, yellow line. I'll never forget it. And he says, and he, this was a big guy. And he picked me up and I had my stuff on and he put me on. He says, as soon as that light turns green, you're jumping out or I'm kicking you out. And uh, he actually said some other stuff, but I'm not going to repeat it here. And uh, it, it, it did. It turned green and I took a step. And that's it. it I, my first jump was done. But that's kind of what I feel a lot of people experience when they go through that curtain. Like it's mm -hmm. uh, imposter syndrome kicks in. Am, did I do enough training? Am I prepared for this? And sometimes you just have to jump. Yeah, absolutely. So sorry for that side story there, but I thought it was relevant. Uh, no, I I, 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 I really like um, – illustrations metaphors uh it, this is like this and i and i think that's true like i've i've had people like your your guy at the door to help get me out and you know you were in in some ways you were there of your own accord 
uh, you, your own choices got you. Maybe maybe you didn't want all the choices. You may have second guessed a few of them or something, but you were there of your own uh, free will and inviting that person into your life to help push you out the door. And that's really cool. I'm kind of envious. But you know. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty crazy. I'm, I'm glad I'm done with that area, area of my life, that time of my life. I'm very glad, but it was, sure. it was a neat experience. So what are some of the things that um, people that, that join your group or people that work with you um, when they're seeking out, a, where are they in their journey? And when is a good time to say, uh, I got to call Wayne? Sure. So, um, so the guys that I'm working with are generally, I mean, I mean, we, we've got things to help people that are early on the entrepreneur journey, knowing that a lot of the people that, that you're working with here are business owners, entrepreneurs, we, we have things to help people early on the journey. We've got a um, program we call base camp to help people get in a rhythm of taking self inventory of what they want and then setting goals. So we do like working with people early on in the journey for our group, for the business builder camp group proper. Um, most of the people I work with in that case are already, already going, the business is already a going concern. They've got some cash flow. They've got clients, typically a handful of employees and are, are headed in that direction. And so they're starting to, um, quite a few of my clients are um, guys with young, younger children, and my kids are now, my oldest is almost 17. Um, so my kids aren't, they're youngish, youngish, but, but not super young. So a lot of the guys in our group do have um, younger children, and they're, they're working to grow their business for sure, but they're also working to get around people that will help them answer the question, you know, how do I also be a good dad? How do I also be a good husband? How do I balance all this? How do I um, make the business do for me the things that I've promised my family I'm, that it was going to do for us? Oh, that's a big one. Promises. Do you mind if I touch on that? No, for a no, no, I love it. I, I love how you're like going wherever. <laughs> so one of the biggest challenges is setting expectations. Now you set expectations professionally, but you also need to set expectations personally. This is why I'm a huge advocate of not saying work-life balance, but by saying life balance. Yeah. So anything that I'm doing in my business, it's going to take time away from my personal life with my wife or with my friends or something like that. I try to organize this and inform them in the as early as possible Hey, I need a little bit of time here. I need to do this. If there's something that comes up out of the blue, would you mind if um, I really want to do this? I know we have this going on. Is that okay? But more over than that, I really like to say, hey, um, and, and I sit down with my wife and I say, you know what? This is our goal. And you're, you're the most important thing in this world to me. But we have a mechanism in place that's going to get us to where we want to go. And I really want you to be a part of this. So as we go through this journey, it's time sometimes things will come up that were unexpected. And I just want you to know that you mean the world to me. But in order to accomplish certain things, sometimes we have to do things that we didn't really plan for. But most of the time, what my goal is, is to make sure I tell you and share with you everything that I want to do or everything that I'm doing so that so that it's not throwing, you know, throwing a, a curve, a curve into things. And I wonder how do you, how do you share that with the people that, um, to help set up that communication, not only in business, but in per your personal life? Well, I, I really love the way you're talking about your relationship, um, and how, you know, you and Sarah would like talk about what, what will happen? Like I vis, I can, I can visualize you, Jamie, sitting and and creating the space to to get clear like that. And my wife Catherine and I do that. Uh, we don't do it perfectly, and it's been a um, a journey. But one of the things I try to share with with my clients is is just like you shared with me and with all the everybody watching this. You shared a moment of how you work on this. And so I try to be pretty vulnerable and be kind of the, the test rabbit 
for for this and and talk about what's going on like we've spent a lot of um you know a relatively lot of of time and money it seems like with our with our therapist guy because we wanted to get better and we wanted to handle the demands of business and four children and a farm at one point so so yeah i just try to share openly about my thinking in certain situations what happened and then share openly about how Catherine and i for example like um we most Mondays we sit down out in my we have a little separate coaching building where I meet with uh, clients and where we do small groups and Catherine and I go out I mean like not all of us we didn't have enough to know us have a separate building so we had to try to do this sometimes in the morning over coffee but we go out in that building and we'll get out our calendars and, and we're prioritizing right that's what you're talking about is prioritizing and when do we prioritize certain things with growing my business like you know, that are especially outside of business hours if there's a weekend thing to go to like a mastermind group how do we prioritize that so we we talk about that we do an annual count cal- we've been doing an annual calendar i have to tell you like this year the calendar got kind of like thrown up in the air um but we take a paper calendar and write out 12 months of parties with the children parties with my work parties with kathy getting away with some of her friends her family they're in maine so she likes to travel and we just we lay all that up so I, yeah I, I just i don't know if i'm answering your question directly but talking about it and talking with our fellow business owners and entrepreneurs who understand balancing all those demands about how we handle that with our spouse and our children um, that, that I, I get all this stuff by like experimentation and bumping into that curtain that I'm talking about, talking to somebody else and then trying to course correct. Yeah. I think it's good because you're giving people a, a, a platform or an opportunity to even think about this stuff. Um, I will tell you, I've been divorced several times, <laughs> uh, not just once. Um, and that's something that I'm ashamed of, um, and if I look back on those previous relationships, there's one constant, me, in those relationships. And yeah. it was lack of communication. That's it. That's all it is. And in businesses, I've had divorces with business partners. Sure. Um, and there's one common thing in all of those, me, lack of communication. So I'm doubling down on the communication thing now. And I love Sarah to death. She is everything to me. And first and foremost, I want her to be happy, but the vehicle to get there is our business. And as long as we're communicating with one another, um, nothing else really matters because we're yeah. happy. So, so you brought the topic of vulnerability and, and, and you're a little bit vulnerable now again uh, with talking about I've been divorced. And in you know my bio, it talks a little bit about uh, or, or at least it makes mention of struggles that I had with alcohol in the past. And I've had problem with workaholism, uh, the two together. And, you know, and I mentioned like a, a therapist. So we're, we're both practicing, we're practicing being vulnerable. And, and one thing I wanted to share about this idea of like, if people have, uh, if they're stuck or if they have bottlenecks in their business, uh, vulnerability has served me well in the past. It, says, it mentions in my bio about working with my dad and helping him grow the company. And eventually we sold it to a publicly traded firm and, and it grew a lot while I was there. But I, I have to say that, you know, I, I learned some of this from my dad and, and some of it is also within, and it kind of comes naturally to me is we were, we were really vulnerable with, outside consultants, uh, coaches, um, peer groups that we were involved in. I, I always thought it, I, I always to describe it as like, we, we had people come into the business to try to help us. And you could tell that they had experience working with clients who like kind of played their cards close to the vest and didn't want to lay it out and didn't want to really talk about their problems and challenges and the things that they were stuck on. And I would say like, man, this is like exploratory surgery. So we want to get up on the table and, and like you start cutting, you're the expert that has looked at a whole bunch of other businesses like ours. If I don't completely, even if it, even if I, I hate to say it, like I, I wish, like you said about being divorced, like oh, I, I'm sort of ashamed of this. Well, look, but you know, all of our experiences can benefit other people when we talk about it. 
So it's so good you say it. And, and but same thing with business and getting stuck, and and looking for the mentor is going to help open the curtain. If I can just lay it out there, um, and I'm not going to go out on stage with a bunch of potential clients in the room and go, let me tell you what a mess you know this particular thing is. I you know we have to use good judgment, but if we're looking for help, being vulnerable is such a such a valuable tool, right? It really is. And that may be one of the tools that you talk about for offering others. Um, I think I think vulnerability is huge. Um, being true to yourself, being authentic. Um, and when I first started, I was faking it. I thought, I'm going to fake it till I make it uh, because I don't want to be perceived as someone that doesn't know or doesn't have. And if I could do anything differently, I would have flip-flopped that 100% in retrospect. Mm, you um, had to get through it. <laughs> but you had to get through it. But now yeah. I know. And this vulnerability thing, this authentic, being authentic and true to yourself, people resonate with that. This is a noisy world. And people, BS meters are going off left and right. People can read straight through a lot of that. Um, so why not be truthful and honest about where you're at? And I think, I think in retrospect, um, a lot more people would have appreciated where I was coming from um, as opposed to saying, oh, you know. So I've got a funny story about that. I God, I'd love to hear it. It's like, so, so I started doing coaching consulting six and a half years ago, starting this journey to try to help people grow and share things that I knew. And I, w I was trying to figure out what I should say to, to sell something. And I was kind of scared. I had four kids and, you know, coming off of a corporate job, we got to make some money. And I, I knew a lot about sales because we had built a sales team and a sales force and had done a lot of work with B2B marketing. So I, it seemed a natural place to go to, to be a consultant in the area of sales improvement. And I would watch what all these other people were doing on video and the things they were saying and then try to do videos like that. And I was really concerned about um, what I what I wore and how I dressed, and I am just not a suit and tie guy. Uh, <laughs> I'm a farmer, country boy, and I was so I I, well, I found these old videos the other day, some of the first videos I ever did, and I had more hair then than I have now. Uh, and <laughs> but I was wearing a suit, and <laughs> it was it was hilarious. Like I was all like stiff and like <laughs> um here at stronger salespeople that was the thing i was doing at the time with stronger salespeople and i had and, and yeah anyway so i i hear you about maybe we should have started off but i think we have to go through the ups and downs of the journey and realizing then when we find those videos like oh my gosh part i was growing really, part of i was growing, making though, right? it <laughs> yeah oh yeah, if I ever get to that point where um, I'm in a position to where I can actually fill out a, a speaker writer or something like that, um, I am not required to wear a suit. Sorry. <laughs> and just so you know, I've dedicated or donated all my suits. All my suits have been donated. So I have one suit. And as a matter of fact, I saw it the other day. It has dust on the shoulders from where it's hanging up. It's been there so long. I, yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. There's a handful of times where it's appropriate for the benefit of other people. I mm -hmm. will do it. Yeah. But I'm sure not my go-to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, we're, we're coming close to the end of the episode today, the live stream here. And so um, how is the best way for people to get in touch with you? So we, we made it easy, Jamie. We just created a page uh, and it's business builder camp, like business builder camp, all one word, um, dot com forward slash bottleneck. And so we created a page, your your face is there. It's uh, it's always gonna always gonna be there forever. And there's a, a couple of resources there for your listeners, uh, things that that would help them, including um, a little short course on the tools we use to take personal inventory and then to set goals for the next period of time. So that'd be a great way to get in touch. And I'd love to hear from people and help out any way I can. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, thank you for sharing uh, this. This is a great conversation today. Uh, I always love talking to you. It's no different on live stream than it is when we're together or <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted I, I before we wrap today, um, is there anything else you would like to say uh, prior to your exit that just may help someone out that may be stuck or may need that you know a, a little bit of of Wayne wisdom? Yeah, well, I I think the the first thing to do 
I, I love to write things down. I think when we when we work things out on paper, there's something magic about the tactile nature of that. So if you feel stuck, I, I wouldn't spend, boy, I've done this before. Like don't spend day after day writing about that, but get clear on the problem and and try to, you know, see it by by sketching out, maybe even pictures, you know, stick figures and flow charts, and then Take it to other people. That's that vulnerability thing. Take it to a bunch of other people. And you talked about going to your mentors. Just just take that and, and lay it out and see what other people say and gather their information. It's very rare that anybody's going to judge you. Everybody wants to help you. It's like when you start sharing like that and showing people what you need help with, they, the, the universe kind of falls all over itself trying to give you answers and things show up, right? It really does. Um, so I hope that encourages somebody. Wow. Thanks again, Wayne. Heck yeah, it does. Yeah. So just get an idea out there, take it to other people, share it with them. And uh, that's the best way to get started. They'll love you. They won't judge you. Yeah. And if they do, yeah, get them out. <laughs> Next. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, uh, is there anything else? No. no? <laughs> I mean, probably, but you'd have me here forever. <laughs> Well, we should talk more often. We should talk more often, doggone it. I want to hear the story of that bear behind you. <laughs> Another day. <laughs> well, hold on one quick second. Don't go anywhere. Um, I'll go ahead and wrap up here. So uh, just want to say thank you, everybody, for tuning in to Live with Bottleneck. We've been talking with Wayne Herring. And Wayne was kind enough to set up a, 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 a private link just for all the viewers, <laughs> go to businessbuildercamp.com forward slash bottleneck uh, to get some of his resources, some of the tools that he recommends and uses himself. So go there today, businessbuildercamp.com forward slash bottleneck. Again, I've been talking today with Wayne Herring, the owner of Business Builder Camp. Uh, send an email if you like, wayne.herring at the at herringcoach.com. Um, or you can check him out on LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Um, and Wayne did bring up a book that he was reading called War of Art. So check that out if you're interested. And again, I want to say thank you so much. My name is Jamie J. And I am the CEO and founder of Bottleneck Virtual Assistance. And I love doing this live stream live with Bottleneck so that I can talk to people much like Wayne who can help you stop the bottleneck in your business and, and more importantly in your life. Get the quality of life that you always wanted. Please go talk to Wayne if you're stuck, if you're worried about you know where you're going, if you're unsure of what you're doing. Um, he is a tremendous human being. I've known him for many, many years and uh, one of the brightest and kindest souls. Uh, I've had the uh, fortune of meeting. So have a fantastic day today. Thank you so much again for tuning in. And uh, remember, create your own ripple. Thanks so much. We'll talk Thanks, to you Mike. pretty soon. <laughs>